Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. I've been asked to make a little video explaining some of the differences about what all the numbers mean on, on rifle scopes. So I've chosen two very similar rifle scopes, both from Element Optics. I've got a Helix 6 to 24 by 50, and I've also got a Helix 4 to 16 by 44. So the simple question is, what do all the numbers mean? Some of us may take this for granted, but not everybody knows. So for example here, we've got the 6 to 24 by 50 mounted on this 17 HMR. Quite simply, the 6 is the lowest magnification setting you can see on the dial here. And if we wind the magnification up, it goes all the way to 24. The 50 relates to the objective lens size. Now the objective lens is the actual lens within here, not the outer body size. And the objective lens is 50 millimeters in diameter. Now if you went from a 50 up to a 56, although that doesn't sound very much, because of the squared principle of working out the area of a lens, actually going up 6 millimeters from a 50 to a 56 is actually 25% more area for light to enter a scope. So that gives you an idea of just why you would make the jump from a 50 to a 56, for example. Things like tube size, you know, one inch, you can have 30 millimeter, 34, 36 millimeter, even 40 millimeter. Those are the factors to consider. But generally speaking, 30 millimeter these days is the most common size. And in second place, you would say 34 millimeter for the longer range target tactical scopes. Now, if we just put this gun to one side and I just show you this scope now, this is the smaller brother, smaller in some ways, not in others. This is the four to 16 version of the Element Helix. So 4 is the lowest magnification setting and 16 is the highest magnification setting and here we've got a 44mm objective lens within that body. Now the 4 to 16 what that means is it's got a 4 times zoom ratio or a 4 times erector tube again 6 to 24 do the numbers that's a 4 times zoom ratio again something like a 3 to 15 would be a 5 times zoom ratio and you even get larger six times zoom ratio. So something like a two to 12, for example, that would be a six times erector tube. Now, if we turn our attention to the specification sheets of these two rifle scopes, which again are similar, but not identical, we can look here, magnification range four to 60, magnification range six to 24, we've just covered that. Both on 30 millimeter tubes, now the objective lens diameter, 44 and 50, again, we've covered that. So let's talk about some of the other numbers now. The exit pupil is basically the size of the image that comes out of the back end of the scope towards your pupil. Now, the average maximum size your pupil is going to be is about seven, maybe eight millimeters, depending on age, eye health, and things like that. So there's not really much point having an exit pupil far bigger than that actual hole in your eye that the light's coming into. But as you can see here, the exit pupil varies in size. This one goes from 13.5 to 3.3 millimeters. That, again, is through the magnification range. So as you increase magnification, you actually decrease the size of the exit pupil. That's one of the reasons why, when you're trying to look through a scope and pick up an image at high magnification, not only has it got smaller field of view, and we'll come to that in a moment, it's also got a smaller exit pupil to get your eye focused behind. If we look at the comparative of the two, 13.5 to 3.3 millimeters, exit people there, 9.1 to 2.2. So we can immediately see that, you know, almost like for like, at four times magnification, we've got a 3.3 millimetre exit pupil, and at six times magnification, we've only got a 2.2 millimetre exit pupil. Now this, these are all factors to look about when you're thinking what the scope's used for. On a hunting scope, generally larger exit pupil, more light transmission, greater image, um, brightness in low light is very, very beneficial. Whereas on a target scope, you've got a bit more time. You need a bit more precision. That's why we vary from this one to this one slightly. But there is quite a lot of overlap between the two, which is only fair to say. The next fact to look at is the eye relief. Now it says 3.7 inches, that's 3.7 to 4 inches. Now eye relief does vary slightly as you change the magnification setting on a rifle. Some rifle scopes are very, very problematic for that, but elements aren't one of them. You do get fewer and fewer manufacturers now which suffer very badly from it, to the extent where 10 years ago, some scopes were virtually unusable on a, you know, between different shooting positions because when you go prone behind a rifle, it tends to bring your head forward, so it shortens your natural distance from your eye to the scope. And whereas when you sit up or standing, 
you are actually a little bit further away. So if you've got fairly fixed distance and the actual eye relief, that does make a scope a lot easier to use. Another factor to look at is the field of view. Now this is one of the important things, especially so for hunting requirements, because again, a field of view on a zoom scope like one of these does vary. So if we look at the field of view here on the 4 to 16, I'll go metric on both of them just because it's a bit simpler to read the numbers out. So we go from 8.8 .8 to 2.2 metres, that's 2.2 metres wide to 8.8 .8 metres wide, visible at 100 metres, and of course that is a, is a cone shape, it's a triangle. The further away it is, if that was at 1,000 metres, it would be 10 times as much. So compare 8.8 .8 to 2.2 with 6.2 to 1.5. Actually, if you look at those numbers, that's easy to do on this one. 8.8 .8 divided by 4, which is the zoom ratio of this scope, is 2.2. Quite simple. If you do the numbers on that one, it'll probably work out similar. My brain isn't that quick today. In terms of the click value, we've probably covered this click look to clicks before. It depends whether you go minutes of angle or milliradians. Um, the click value is the amount that the point of impact moves compared to the point of aim at the distance you're shooting. These are usually stated in an angular way, so you know, ballpark, a minute of angle is an inch at 100 yards and a milliradian is 10 centimetres at 100 metres. And you can, again, it's a big triangle, so just multiply those, amplify those out. You get to 1,000 metres, a milliradian is a metre, 1,000 metres with minutes of angle. Minutes of angle is 1.069 inches at 100 yards, so it isn't actually as easy to work out as milliradians are, but it's still mathematics. It's still just multiply the actual angular measurement by the distance you're shooting at. If we look at the elevation adjustment range on a scope, that's something else we're very concerned with at longer distances. Now, we'll go with the ballpark, we'll compare minutes of angle and minutes of angle. It doesn't matter because these all convert identically in terms of the relative ratios between them. But the elevation adjustment range on the 4 to 16 is 80 minutes of angle. So that essentially means at 100 yards, you can move your bullet up and down 80 inches compared to your point of aim. Now, if we go to the 6 to 24 version, that's 45 minutes of angle. So that's 45 inches up or down compared to your point of aim. Milliradians is exactly the same ratio. It's 23.3 down to 18.9. So essentially what we're looking at here is on the lower magnification scope, we've actually got more mechanical range of movement, both in elevation and in windage. We go from 45 to 40 in windage, which is left and right. That is generally speaking because on the lower magnification scope, the internal components within the erector tube, etc., which is a tube essentially moving inside the tube, you're seeing the external tube here, there's another tube within that, and when you dial these turrets up and down, it's moving that tube or left and right. That's what changes your point of impact at whatever distance you're shooting. So essentially, if you think about it, the shorter you make the tube within the long tube, the more it can move angularly. The longer you make the tube, i.e. the higher the magnification ratio, the less it can move angularly. This is just a bit more detail than we wanted to cover, but essentially, lower magnification scopes, like for like, will generally show far more elevation of windage travel, which is kind of at odds with the fact that, generally speaking, long-range target, long-range precision shooting, you kind of want both. You do need a mechanical range and you also want high magnification to give you greater aiming precision. That's one of the reasons why, say 10 years ago, a lot of scopes changed up to a 34mm main tube because it gives you more physical space inside the tube for lenses to be moving around without making the lenses physically smaller. An important factor to consider with modern scopes is the parallax settings. Now, we all probably understand that you adjust the parallax to give you the crispest image quality and also avoid the parallax error of the reticle appearing to move if your head moves slightly behind the optic. That's something we could maybe cover in another video. But a lot of scopes are fixed parallax at 100 meters or maybe 50 meters. Now, there are also a lot of adjustable parallax scopes that don't go below 50 meters or 50 yards near enough. That's very important if you're wanting to shoot with the scope on an air rifle or a rimfire where a lot of your quarry distance, target shooting distance may well be below that distance. And although you don't notice parallax as much and you don't notice focal problems as much when your scope is zoomed all the way down to its bottom setting, if you do, for example, in a target scenario, want to be using high magnification, as we can see here up at 24 times, for example, we would want to be able to dial the parallax to give us a crisp image. 
because if you can't, it's just the blurred mess. So the minimum parallax distance is a critical factor and you must really appreciate if you're going to use high magnification on optic, you need to make sure the minimum parallax distance is no further away than you need to shoot. If you need to shoot 10 meters, you need a scope that will dial down to 10 meters. Otherwise, if you need it to focus, you will have to dial all the way down to your bottom magnification setting, which still might not give you a clear image. That is why parallax adjustment and a minimum setting of parallax is very, very important. I have reviewed a lot of high-end scopes and I've noticed that many of them don't go below 50 meters, which is why you can't really use them on an air rifle with great precision. If you want an air rifle scope, you need to look for one that will dial down to the short distances. So 10 yards, 10 meters, perhaps 15 is a critical benefit. If we look at these two, we've got minimum distance of 15 yards, 15 meters on the 4 to 16, and we've got 10 yards, 10 meters on the 6 to 24. Interesting it does that because the 6 to 24 is probably more likely to need that slightly shorter parallax setting, if anything, because it's more of the target scope than the hunting scope. The last couple of units we're going to discuss are pretty simple. Overall length is physically the overall length. Will it fit on your rifle? Have you got enough space? between the saddle and the front rear ocular objective bodies to actually fit the rings in and make sure you can adjust that scope correctly to give you the right eye relief. Lastly, the weight. Well, weight is and isn't a factor. People are very passionate about using carbon fibre and lightweight materials like titanium to make rifles, barrels and stocks to save weight. So why not save a little bit of weight on your scope going to a smaller magnification or certainly no more scope than you actually need for that lightweight hunting scenario. In a target environment or a varminting environment, weight's not such an issue. So you don't see too many scopes going below 600 grams these days, but you see quite a few going over 1,000 to 1,100 grams. Somewhere between those two will give you an ideal scenario. The fewer mechanical features you have on a scope, the less it will weigh, generally speaking. But don't forget, all these high quality glass lenses inside, which are still made of glass, they're not cheap plastic things, all these high quality glass lenses inside are physically massive. So they have a mass that has to be accounted for and you've also got you know, an aluminium tube, you've got stainless steel or brass components in the turrets. Stainless steel is heavier than brass, for example, in the turrets themselves. And the benefit is stainless steel will give you longer life in terms of the wear and tear on the component. But it's interesting when you look at many scopes now, they do have quite solid lifetime warranties on them. So you can buy with reassurance that they are sure that they will work for the number of hundreds of thousands of times you're going to change your turret setting. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that review. I hope it's explained a few of the numbers to do with rifle scope for you. Please like, subscribe and comment and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see the regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.